Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I do indoor vermiculture or worm farming, and in particular, I like to do a lot of experiments and get rid of a lot of Worbin legends. So, today we are going to harvest the 2022 no grit bin. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to try and separate the castings from the worms that I started baiting out last time we looked in this about 20 days ago. We've got some bedding here and we also had a lot of pumpkin, hopefully to entice them to move out. So let's have a look. Let me grab one of my little bins to move these out with and we'll make sure the worms have left the building. So I'm not really doing a light migration, but I am carefully taking the castings off the top here to see what I have in the way of worms left behind simply because um, it is rather moist and I'm seeing a lot of cocoons here and that means that generally the worms don't move out as quickly if the if the castings are a really nice moisture generally it takes more than just a little bit of pumpkin to uh, entice them to get out Although these guys, if they are still in there, they are going to have the opportunity to move out of the castings at least for the next week because when we get done, these castings are going to go on the finished side of blue and these worms are going to go into the feeding side of blue. But I was just trying to prevent there being a buildup of worms in the finished area, so I did want them to migrate. And as I'm going through, I'm just going to pick out all of the unfinished food. So if you're new here, there's an entire playlist you can go to and look at this no grit experiment. This experiment has had no grit added for an entire year. Now I am restarting the experiment for 2023 and we'll get to that a little bit later as to how I've changed the parameters of the experiment. So the reason the experiment went on was that some people say that you need to give them quite a bit of grit with every feeding in order to make sure that the worms can eat properly. Because similar to chickens or other birds, uh, worms have a crop and a gizzard where they physically break up their food uh, by means of mastication. So similar to our teeth, they get something hard and they bang their food against it so that they can digest it. They do have, according to the books that I have read, they do have some digestive enzymes, but just not the same as what mammals have. So that is why they have the crop and the gizzard to hold their food and to crush it up before they are, are able to use the nutrients. So I've run this, this 2023 will be the third year I've run it. And each time so far, I have noticed very little in the way of difference in the way of a similar bin of the same size goes to completion. And so one of the things that people suggested might be the reason, one, grit's not nearly as important when, they're feed, when you're feeding table scraps and the food isn't as hard as it might be in nature. And I kind of really underestimated how many castings there were here. I got a three gallon bucket and it's over full. Um, so yeah, back to the topic. So they basically, you know, had thought, well, if the food is really soft, then what do you really need to, um, to break up? You can just slurp it up. And uh, then other people thought, well, maybe these worms, because they weren't no grit worms to begin with, maybe, they, had, they came in with grit in their belly and they brought it with them and then they re-ate it and used it later. Because as we know, they, they do eat their castings multiple times uh, until it is a firm, you know, finished and, and devoid of nutrients for them. Let's see what we've got here in the way of a worm ball. Okay, well they are very happy with all of those bits and it looks like they migrated reasonably well. And you can see there is a good number of worms here. I'm willing to bet that there's over a pound in here now. Uh, put in the comments below what your thoughts are. So if you do like the worm content that I put out, uh, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I do post multiple times a week, and sometimes it is just the care of different kinds of worms, and other times it's urban legends like this. 
So I think I do have more than a pound of worms in here. I do not have the patience of Patrick and his executive producer to count thousands of worms. Um, for whatever reason, I just don't. But these guys are now going to go get released into blue. So let's go over there and have a look. First things first, I'm going to empty out my probably close to five gallons of castings here to dry out on top of blue. And I've been using blue in this way for quite some time. The surface area is very conducive to allow the, the castings to dry out so that I can sift them. You know, it gets them dry and then I can sift them and the worms can go back to work in the feeding zone. So speaking of feeding zone, let me turn you around and I'll show you the release of the worms from the 2022 No Grit project into the feeding zone. Okay, so last time that we were in blue, we finished up the Eat My Shorts experiment and put all of those worms in here. And now blue is going to get a little bit more help with the probably pound and a half, maybe two pounds, of the Red Wiggler Blue Worm European Nightcrawler mix from the 2022 version of the No Grit Project. So now Blue probably has upwards of 20, now 20, maybe two pounds of worms in here. So that is why I feed him so much. If you want to see Blue in action, I will put the last video for Blue up at the end of the video. Let me go get those babies for the 2023 program and we can see them and see what they're doing. Okay, here we are back looking at the 2023 no-grit population here. We started these with, I can't remember if it was 100 or 200 of the Red Wiggler uh, cocoons, and then we got everything nice and moist, which seems to be kind of drying out a little bit. But let's flip around here and see if we can find any baby worms. If you see any, put them in the comments below. Somebody forgot to bring their readers with them today. Oh, wait a minute. Looks like... I don't know. Do we think that could have got in there within... Uh... Oh, there's another one. So it's been about two months since we started those cocoons. Do you guys believe these are two-month-old hatchlings? Looking pretty good size to me but we started this with not prepared bedding we used everything that had to do with and there's another one so I'm willing to bet the hatchlings are really really starting to go at it in here that's good I'm glad I was kind of concerned that starting this experiment this time of year might be a bad idea with it being a cooler temperature and then also uh, with the you know ongoing problem of having the furnace on drying everything out but that's good I'm so glad that the worms are hatching and they look like they are doing good so now that I think I have a bit of a population uh, we're gonna start a little bit early and we're gonna give them some food okay so they're going to get some slow food in the way of onion and then some fast food in the way of pepper tops and I think that will be more than enough to keep this very small worm population going, you know, until we check on it in another month. So if you like this experiment, give it a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.